Jake, on this channel, we're always talking about buy this, buy that. Here's the right price to buy this. Here's the right price to buy that. Well, we're going to go the opposite direction today. Oh, today we're going to talk about cards that you should not buy. Let's get into it. Highest level of gratitude to our patrons who power the channel through Patreon. Check out the Patreon link in the description to learn about monthly giveaways, VIP Discord access, and even our official playmat. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. I'm Jake. I'm Joel. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel are Magic. We are going to get into our picks for cards you should not buy right now, or if you're going to buy them, you should definitely consider all of the little things that go into what the prices of these cards are before you make your purchase. That's right. Essentially, some of these cards today are, are going to be scarce. Some of them are just like way overpriced. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video. We're going to talk about the number one card that we absolutely would not touch with a 10 foot pole right now. Big shout out to our sponsor, Dragon Shield. Make sure if you're shopping Dragon Shield online, use the link in the description below. That's going to help out our channel directly. That's a great way to do it. Joel is going to be in the bottom left. I'm going to be in the bottom right. There's going to be a giant card image in the middle let's get into it starting off jake let's look back to double masters blight steel colossus jake we just saw this reprinted in double masters first printing was in mirrored and besieged but the double masters copy is already climbing up there and it's around its all-time high of just over $70 right now. Yeah, and that's a good site we should talk about. Take the prices in this video with a grain of salt. Nothing on this channel is financial advice. We are talking about cards, but this is all from an entertainment perspective and just our opinion on some stuff. You can find a copy of like a light play dark uh, blight seal colossus on eBay for like around $60. So always do your own due diligence. Scarce play here. Only two copies, like Joel was saying. Yeah, we've got the uh, showcase version or whatever from 2XM, but you know, those are right. more scarce than the regular ones. I just think that this one is the target for a reprint or for some kind of secret layer. We've got some options for this its one to own, pop up. Its own secret layer? Right. Yeah, I mean, something, something. Just I think that this steel. is... This is the kind know. of card that could that could definitely pop up in a reprint just because of how popular it is. Jake, here's a less popular card that is much more niche, but still very brutal with Painter Servant. This is a very niche card. Again, super duper scarce. This is a card that I think could, uh, you know, pop up on the list, something like that. We did see it reprinted as a masterpiece. Yeah, very, very specific commander card here, and you have to be building a specific way in order to get the most out of this card, but the price is reflected in the fact that people do like to play it as a combo piece. Yeah, exactly. Just like Blight Still Colossus, around 70 bucks right now, near its all-time high. This one you can see is the Shadow More version, and like Jake said, we've got a masterpiece as well, and that's it. So like a masterpiece reprint on top of a just set card, that's not really going to do much to fix the price of this Big shadow. Big reprint Morgan. equity. Oh, Big huge, reprint equity. huge. This oh, yeah. is the kind I of I mean, card. everything in this video, really. Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of how we approach this video is we know we've got Commander Legends 2, a.k.a. Baldur's Gate coming out this summer. We know we've got Double Masters 2 coming out towards the end of the year. We know we've got a huge artifact set with Brothers War. I mean, that's Mishra versus Urza. That whole yeah. conflict is about these artifacts. And so, Ooh, I love you know, artifacts. like, are we going to see a mystical archive, great. but it's artifacts like, a you know, inventions portfolio or something like that? That's the kind of place where you're going to see Painter's Servant pop back up because they'll be able to, just like with Mystical Archive, go through and pull popular artifacts, Speak of the Devil, Emerald Medallion, all the medallions. They can just pull popular artifacts and put them at different rarities, just like the Mystical Archive. Rare, Mythic, that's not going to hugely shift the price on these, except just bring everything down overall and give you another purchasable option. These are great as a cycle in a set it's a perfect set of cards that need to reprint the green one is the least desirable because green has ramp you know it's like right. it's not that the green one isn't good no but you know like the red one the black one i mean these are all very very strong cards and yep. um you know we saw them in commander i believe this was what 2014 commander 14 and yeah commander 14 tempest was their original printing right and then also in tempest so these are definitely due for a reprint coming up here soon. Yeah. Um, anything that makes something cost less is always going to have a big uh, demand, right? This is better than 
uh, you know, mana rocks in certain situations, the, uh, better and fast mana. Well, at the very least, it's it's very similar to two mana comparable. rocks, yeah. to arcane signets. It's just like a backward signet because it's going to contribute one colorless mana, essentially, to all of the spells that are of the color. And it's two mana ramp. This, like Jake said, in green doesn't matter so much, but in colors like black and white, especially for CEDH, you're trying to cram as many of the two mana rocks in there as you possibly can, and these are firmly on that list because they are contributing not a color pip for you, but a colorless mana to the spell that matches the color. Around 30 bucks for all of these. Scarcity play, only printed in Tempest and reprinted in the Commander 14 set. I just think these are going to pop up very, very soon because they're desirable across most of Commander play. Next up, we have Grand Abolisher. Two white for a 2-2. Two, two. During your turn, your opponents can't cast spells or activate abilities of artifacts, creatures, or enchantments. I mean, this is just straight up good stuff. CEDH, like, this shuts so many different things down. This card is such a pain in the arse. Oh, yeah. This one, like those medallions, was printed in Commander 14. You're looking at the M12 version here, its original version. Also popped up in the Arch Enemy supplemental uh, product, but that really doesn't move the price too, too much. Grand Abolisher, this price is driven, in my opinion, by CEDH because it's a huge control piece for that. It's only two mana. It's low to the ground. Little mana restrictive with two white pips, but still $27 plus dollars. And it's got one printing major in a set, one supplemental printing, and one, you know, like ancillary product printing. The price doesn't lie. You know, people want this I mean, card. When it's on the battlefield, it just, it does so much for you during your turn. Oof, so much. It's just, it's such an amazing, it, it is a must answer lightning rod. Right. Yeah. It's and just if you look so at, good. if you look at Baldur's Gate as an opportunity for Prince, it's Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. It's D&D. &D. That's what we're doing again. And so human and cleric. Yeah. Relevant. Absolutely possible. That is. That could happen. I seriously think that's where we're going to see this card. We'll see. I wouldn't be buying it right now, especially knowing what we've got coming out this year. Jake, let's talk about some real estate. Yeah, Triomes. I love these cards so much. Me too, dude. The, uh, the, the showcase versions of these are so sick. They pop. They pop. Yeah. They really do. But um, versatility here. The only thing I don't like about these is that they enter the battlefield tapped. Sure. But you can search them up with fetch lands. That's so why you they're... Can in EDH, EOT, Crack of Fetchland, grab this. You're going to have perfect fixing if you're in three color. I mean, these are just amazing. And then you can cycle them away late game. If you draw one of them, you don't need it. Just Love that. EOT or just in your main phase. Whenever you want to do it, just cycle it away. I'm pretty sure one of the sets that we're going to see this year is going to be a three color shard set. I would assume that we're going to get the other ones of these that haven't been printed yet that could be an option i also think that we could see a reprint of these as either a you know full reprint of that cycle in the set to sell boxes or some kind of chase card box topper collector booster you know exclusive that kind of thing i think that we could also see those reprinted there because all of these have crept up 13 to 16 bucks now for the base copies. So you know the foils and the showcases and what have you are more expensive than that. And they've only been printed in Ikoria. So they definitely need to be, they definitely need some attention or they will just keep climbing. It is worth noting that the ones that have blue are worth more than the ones that don't have blue. You know, you could say that about most real estate in MTG. Yeah. But um, yeah, I remember nabbing these, uh, the low base copy foils for like around like six and seven dollars and then i would pick up the cheap ones that were non-foil around like fours and fives as much as i could overall these could be ones that if we don't see a reprint of them you need them at these prices this is a decent price this one that i'm you know we're telling you with this video don't buy these because there's such a high possibility that in a shard set they come along for the ride as some sort of you know inclusion in a special place Jake, this is another one from Ikoria, only the single printing, and wow, this card is already $17 creeping up on 20. It's a one mana artifact, any counter. It doesn't only play with plus one, plus one counters. This is any counters on creatures, period. It pulls them all to you, and it pulls them all to itself, rather, and then spits them back out at the beginning of your combat. I've played against this card. I've played with this card. This card is brutal as hell in these strategies because you basically have to answer not only their board, 
but this must be answered as well, or any little 1-1 they play becomes an enormous threat at combat. It's a scarcity play. Mana value is right where you want it to be at 1. Um, very attractive for, for players, especially, you know, lowering the curve. I mean, this is pretty much as good as it gets. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Next up, we have Storm Surge Kraken, two blue and three other for a 5-5. Five, five. The big word on here is Hexproof. This is another card that's scarce. Um, only one printing here, Commander 2014. It also has an ability called Lieutenant. As long as you control your commander, Storm Surge Kraken gets plus two, plus two, and has whenever Storm Surge Kraken becomes blocked, you may draw two cards. Your opponent doesn't want to block it, but they do want to block it if their life total's getting pretty low, right? And that's going to put cards in your hand. Yeah, seriously, seven is nothing to scoff at. That's a really chunky hit if they're letting it through. And if they do block it, like you said, draw two, baby, a little divination, I'll go with it. Commander 14 dipped into this keyword, this lieutenant word, where if your commander was also on the battlefield, they got more powerful. This was the most powerful of that cycle, this five mana rare. And that's why it's up to 17 bucks because it's a really good card and it's only been printed once. Similarly, we also have Angelic Field Marshal with Lieutenant. As long as you control your commander, it gets plus two, plus two, and creatures you control have Vigilance. So it becomes a 5-5 five, five Vigi Flyer for four that also gives your attacking line Vigi. You can see that it's not quite as strong as Storm Surge Kraken. That's why this one's only $7, but it's still a card still that's very, very scarce, right, and good. Other than Secret Layers or if you possibly sneak them into an ancillary slot of a collector's product for any given set, you're only going to be printing cards that say commander on the text into these commander specific sets. So I could see these cards being reprinted in that set. Krakens, angels, they'll fit into the theme there. And at $17 for Storm Surge and 7 bucks for Angelic, if they do get reprinted, that's going to be the second reprint and you'll see that price absolutely tank shaman equipment i could see this one popping up in a commander legend set it's a very famous uncommon very powerful combo piece and it just morning tide for its only printing that is why this uncommon is up to 15 bucks uh yeah it's a strong card it's a fun card but it's a card that if it did get reprinted i could see the the price of this easily going to like a third of what it is oh yeah oh yeah definitely yeah, next up we got Conda's Banner, cost two, and it can be attached only to a legendary creature. In Commander, that is pretty relevant. Creatures that share a color with equipped creature get plus one, plus one, so we got some Anthem action going on. In Creatures that share a creature type with equipped creature get plus one, plus one, so we get some serious extra Anthem stuff going if we build the right way. And then with a simple equip of two, this card is just very, very strong. And also another card that only has one printing and it's in Champions of Kamigawa. It dodged all reprints. And so this card was hyped going into it. It's not going to lose any value coming out of it. It's a $15 card now. And, you know, based on a scarcity play, tribal, commander, centric with that attached only to a legendary creature. You know, a functional reprint could happen that could tank this version at two mana to Secret equip. Layer. Yeah, Secret Lair. This is one that could be on the list, in oh, my yeah. opinion. I could yeah. see this going on the list. Not going to move the needle of the price much if it does. No, I do like that thought, though. When we're going back in time for the Brothers War, when we get back around to Dominaria United, Legendary as a subtype being a major theme is a thing in those sets. And what they like to do with the list cards is, you know, kind of line those up aesthetically or or you know mechanically with the sets that those are released around because that list is sort of always changing yeah i could actually actually see uh, conda's manor popping up there jake we got one more before we are into the most expensive card that we would say absolutely stay away from right now but before we get to that we've got an enchantment that has only been printed in odyssey and in commander 2015 and at 14 dollars, i could see this i actually thought this was going to pop up in neon dynasty pre-cons oh it's so good and it's just scarce now at this point and with enchantments matters being a sub theme that's really getting a lot of attention lately i think that you know i would love to see this in commander legends dude that odyssey foil of this is just so beautiful beautiful old foil old border that's what i'm talking about oh man yeah i just you know enchantments artifacts we talk about this all the time on this channel we'll say it if you're new here welcome um they're just very difficult to answer right you know in 
like three fifths of the color pie have a very hard time answering them once they have resolved. It's one of these cards that's just a lot of players want to use this. It is kind of like a stacks card. It's kind of a punishing card. It's a card that I would say is a little bit sweatier than, you know, most casual pods in my opinion, mm -hmm. but it's one of those cards. Again, I could see this popping up on the list as well. Possibly just use the commander version of it, the Commander 2015 version with the little Planeswalker symbol in the bottom, that would probably be, that would probably work well. And you've waited for it. Here it is, the number one card that we absolutely would not touch with a 10 foot pole. It's Imperial Seal. And the reason is, is this is just cruising along. Last I saw it was worth like between $800. Uh, you know, I'm sure you could find a busted version for like 700, but for something that's like non-reserve list, I would not touch this even oh man like if i had this i would move it in a heartbeat yeah this is and we've talked about this card i feel like for years now seriously at Dude. the beginning of last year jake released a reprints we need video and i'm pretty sure this was the thumbnail of that video we thought kamigawa man yeah it could show up in neon dynasty we were like that would be a, a good spot for it maybe yeah or master set i uh, just this one is so crazy. The reprint equity that's built up in this. Jake's saying 800 bucks. Jake, when I looked it up and pulled the art for this on Scryfall, it said $1,600 was oh, the geez. TCG player price on this. And so that might just be how out of touch I am. I'm going to get an in the moment straight up eBay lowest right now. And let's see what we got. Judge promo light played for around 700 so I think there are people that are trying to get out of this card yeah. Um, because I do think a reprint is imminent. We're talking about non-reserve list here, and I think we could all learn a lesson from the Imperial Recruiter effect, the, the Grim Tutor effect. Oh, yeah. You know, this is a card that CEDH, they do want it, but this is sorcery speed. This is, um, you know, I'm not going to try to say that this card is bad. But if it did get a reprint, the price would just absolutely plummet in a big way. I think this card would go to like $50. I think it would be probably between 30 to 50 bucks. My suggestion would be sell it, but that's not financial advice. Jake mentioned the judge card from 2016. This is a more affordable version to buy. But honestly, right now, I just would not touch this card. Proxy it until you can get it. I do think this card is incoming because... There's just no way that they know. There's no way that they don't know that this card is basically top of their list for reprint equity. That's not some of the most famous stuff like Fetchlands or cards like, yeah. you know, Blightsteel Colossus, huge mythics that, you know, Force of Will, cards like that. The popular stuff. And then you've got this one that needs to be reprinted yeah. pretty hard. And I want to, I want to clear this up because it said like the price would go to like 30 to 50, right? And it wouldn't be these versions, not the right. OG versions. The OG versions will take a dip in price, but they'll always hold a premium over whatever new crap they decide to print version For sure. of it. Yeah. Um, you it'll can probably have new art. An it'll probably have like four different v variants of it, you know, these days oh, yeah. coming out. It's going to be, you know, the chase card. And there's going to be one version that's like numbered one through a hundred. It doesn't matter, but it is a card that absolutely will be reprinted. The question is when? When will it be reprinted? That perfectly sums up this entire video. All the cards on this list, Jake, we're gonna see at some point. And these prices right now are just kind of outrageous for what the card is based on its scarcity. Yeah, that's true. You know, obviously some of these were a little bit lower and more affordable. You know, if it's in your budget, you know, there's no reason picking up a $15 card that might go to seven, you know, if you don't care about eight bucks, whatever. But for stuff like Imperial Seal, um, yeah, for stuff like Blightsteel Colossus, if you don't need Blightsteel Colossus, no real reason to pick that up right now. You're going to find a more affordable version in the future. If you absolutely have to have it, proxy it and wait for it if you want to. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. We know you have a choice of all the videos on the platform, so we appreciate you watching ours. If you do shop at TCG Player, use our affiliate link down in the description. That directly helps the channel. And Jake, the quickest, clickiest way that you can help us out, hit subscribe, hit like if you got anything from this video at all. If you got anything from this video at all, let us know in the comments.